uh, Claims and Credentials Working Group. I'm just going to go over what was in our charter again. Uh, well, I'll, first I'll talk about when we meet, in case you want to join us, we would love to have you on our meetings. We're going to talk about what the charter was, what the goals are, uh, and where the work areas are. And then we're going to dig into some specific items. Uh, most notably, Presentation Exchange is the one that's been getting the most progress to date, and I believe Dan wanted to talk a bit about that, so I'll hand it over to him for that. Uh, cover a few more items, but uh, without further ado, this is the Claims and Credentials Working Group. <clears throat> we meet every other Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. If you want to get the meeting details, add the decentralized identity at Gmail calendar to your calendar list, and you should be able to find that. If you have any problems, you know, reach out to Balaj or me. We're pretty active in the Working Group Claims and Credentials Slack channel. And lastly, if you want the charter, meeting notes, et cetera, you can go to this Notion page and it will link you to everything. That's where we manage a lot of the meetings and the resources for our working group. Uh, these slides will be available after, so you can go in and click on it later. Goals. So our goals are to work on the request, creation, exchange, and verification of identity credentials or claims in a vendor agnostic manner. We want to figure out once you have verifiable information, how can you move it around? How can you mint new stuff and how can you verify it? And this is all in support of the standards, of course, and interoperable use cases. We want to also advocate for the mainstream adoption of blockchain identity and credentials. Whenever people are like, hmm, how do we do that? You know, we're happy to have that as a discussion in the working group sessions. Specifically, we focus on data formats, communication protocols, and taxonomies associated with claims and credentials. This means that uh, we're building stuff on top of the verifiable credentials, right? So you'll see shortly that uh, presentation exchange is, okay, now that we have verifiable credentials, how do we request them and move them around? Communication protocols. Although we have uh, working groups like DIDCOM, we want to figure out specifically what is the relationship between these transport layers and also uh, verifiable credentials, um, and of course the uh, request issuance presentation revocation thereof. And then finally, taxonomies. As new things bubble up and we see more uh, claims and credentials in industry, we want to keep track of them and start to categorize them. I'm going to go into each item now. So recent initiatives. We had presentation exchange, credential manifest, taxonomy, and there was a, um, a, a kind of a screwy project called freeclaims.org that I worked on. Um, upcoming initiatives, uh, talking more about W3C interoperability at the credential and claims level, particularly. Uh, web protocols, there have been like two interactions with OpenID Connect and how cr credentials can play into the claims role for that protocol. What other web protocols can we explore? Um, Zero knowledge proofs was an active item too, uh, and wallet portability formats. So presentation exchange. Hey Wayne, we lost you. Sorry about that. I'm running like, a, like Gen 2 Linux and like a browser Zoom, and it's all funky and doesn't like me. But anyway, I'll hand it over to Dan while I hold the screen up. Am I going to the presentation exchange stuff? Brief introduction. We're trying to solve this use case um, where the customer is like, I want to load pre-approval. The bank's like give us this stuff, that's a presentation request. Customer says, here you go, that's the presentation submission, and then the bank can issue credentials or whatnot. Over to you, Dan. We talked a little bit about the Borg, and presentation exchange is very much like the Borg in certain ways. It wants to not care about any particular system it invades, it just wants to get in there and do its thing. So in this sense, like all the systems that we would want to invade or all the different ways that you could exchange credentials that everyone wants to run around like cats and create. So we've got OIDC, we've got DIDCOMS, we've got Chappie, we've got verifiable presentations. There's probably gonna be 14 more by the time that we're done with some of this DID stuff. The goal of presentation exchange is to say, that's crazy. Why don't we have one way instead of creating grammars for every single one of the essentially like outer transport, you know, wrapper type protocols, why don't we at least have one way inside that we can describe uh, a request for some proof, for some, some inputs uh, from a verifier to a, a user or a holder, and one way to send back the things that satisfy those inputs. And do it in such a way that you can embed that exact same data format in um, any one of those, and it would work. So that you can reuse code, not have to basically recreate the same exact thing over and over and over again across all. And this is just born out of mostly frustration. So if we go through it, there's, the first, there's basically two data formats that the spec specifies. One is presentation definition. This is this object, and you can embed it in any target format. We call them 
uh, tar embed targets, like it might be an OI OIDC object that you send over a request. It might be a DID comms object, it might be a you know, Chappie object. You send out um, this object, it's composed of two main things, submission requirements. So the idea that you need to fulfill some of these requirements, like, hey, I need your banking, you know, you gotta do all, satisfy all these criteria. I need some banking information. Um, I, I need you to pick one of a group of A um, options and maybe also need some employment information. I need you to give me all from the options in group B and I need some citizenship information. So I need you to give me one from group C, right? That's basically what this is doing. It's very, very basic um, Boolean sort of logic that can allow you to compose um, different paths um, that can satisfy things. Then down here, we have these input descriptors and these are ways of basically saying, I need you to present me one of these things, right? Like based on what you said above about picking one from a group, for instance, I need you to pick one of these two sort of banking inputs. And what would happen is your wallet's gonna get this regardless of that outer transport protocol and say, okay, do I have any you know, credentials that have this, this type of schema that they're encoded as? Or maybe do I have any that are this type of schema? Um, if the answer is yes, then it goes down and says, well, now that I know I have that, do I have the right field type data? Like maybe for instance, I need it to be from a certain issuer. So this first path selects based on the type of format, it's JSON path just to make sure you can um, use anything, JWTs, VCs. It's also designed to kind of step over that mess as well. So this will find the issuer um, path, regardless of what its target is, being one of those, those credential type formats, and then apply this standard JSON schema filter to say, hey, um, you know what, it needs to be one of these two DIDs that it's got to come from, right, one of these two banks. And maybe some other data that you also want to select on, like the routing number, you know, it's got to be a, from one of these countries or something. So what this allows you to do is basically tell right up front, do I have the credentials to satisfy both the needs that I have and the actual data that's inside them to even do this, you know, get into this dance. From there, um, once you've like picked out the credentials or the, the proofs that you want to send back, there's a matching object and I'll just, I'm gonna go right down to it. It's called the presentation submission object. So this is basically just presenting exactly what you saw um, up above and mapping it back. So this is like, if I was to pick out of their banking input two versus one, because I had to pick one, I got all my employment data with this one. And then I had my credential input one versus two, you know, that I picked here. I, I'm basically able to embed this little object in any of those target formats. Right here, this is a verifiable presentation. It just as well could be the response object for a um, OIDC, you know, object payload, whatever, DID comp, doesn't matter. Basically, the spec is written such that this works exactly the same because it's using JSON path and you basically encode it to select out parts of it, no matter where you're embedding it. So it sort of unifies the presentation of request of what this proof you need to provide me as the verifier and then submission um, and all the logic that goes into that uh, other than the outer endpoints that might be specific to OIDC or DIDCOMS or some of those other envelope um, related things. And we have some examples in here about how it might work with uh, OIDC and you know similar. So here it is, the same thing that you saw above, right? Same object embedded. It just selects from a different place because obviously an OIDC you know, request looks different than, than the other one. Um, and then we also have some chappy stuff that Ori had helped right in here. So the idea here is like, let's just, let's just not, right? Like we've been just doing for a while with these things and let's just not um, save ourselves some time. Cool. To summarize, um, if you need to get something, uh, then you can use that request and presentation submission to do that. Um, next up is a credential manifest. You can look at some of this work. A lot of this work actually led into the presentation exchange. I think we're gonna retro, we're gonna delineate what this should cover reverse presentation exchange and fix up that standard too, because it's useful, but it allows you to um, display automatically uh, how do you request for information when that looks like an HTML web form or whatever. Uh, taxonomy was our effort to keep track of all the ongoing credentials in real life. Um, and reality check, there aren't too many in production today, but we've actually started to see some changes there. And that's super exciting. But uh, we're trying to keep our you know nose close to the grindstone and just keep publishing as necessary. And when we have enough examples, categorize uh, different ones. So new items, 
Uh, zero knowledge proof. We don't quite know what diff is best positioned to help with. There are a lot of suggestions out there. Everyone has some ideas, but there are also other groups in the space working on this. Um, and uh, figuring out the relationship with each of them is an important item to us because we think that there are some activities that diff can do really well in the domain of uh, zero knowledge proofs, but we also want to um, uh, figure out how to specialize in the right way. Another item are web protocols. Uh, recently within the past like three or four weeks, we've seen two different approaches touch, with, uh, touch upon OpenID Connect. How can we you know, mesh it with the claims aspect of OpenID Connect to send verifiable credentials, right? Um, and uh, as you saw, presentation exchange, we had some action there. But also, um, Matter, um, Tobias from Matter, I believe next week will be presenting on uh, OIDC client bound assertions, which uh, will also um, merge uh, verifiable credentials and claims. Super exciting because that means basically all OpenID Connect systems could prospectively speak our standards. Right, because we're building on top of it. So uh, that could be huge for adoption as mentioned in the goals. So what other protocols can we look at other than OIDC? Um, you know, uh, what about IoT devices, et cetera? And what about uh, intersection with like the SIOP work that I know is uh, going on really well and being led by Oliver and others, I believe. Another new item that was just introduced, wallet protocols. When we're copying and pasting a wallet somewhere, um, how do we um, move that? What's the format? Uh, Ori and Transmute proposed a universal wallet format uh, for that uh, called universal wallet. And I believe that spec is posted in the channel somewhere. Um, and uh, some people in different communities call these vaults. So we can still escape from terminology hell if we figure out um, you know, what we can agree to call it. Um, I think everyone just wants to talk about the same thing. And that's basically a summary of what we're working on as the claims and credentials group here. So thanks for listening. Hey, can I mention um, the taxonomy work specifically? Um, this is something where I think, you know, we really, really do want engagement. I think it's probably the lowest uh, hanging fruit. I don't know who's on the call, if everyone's developer or not, but um, if you're not, the taxonomy work doesn't demand that. I mean, really what it's about is going industry by industry and identifying existing schemas uh, that are out there that are commonly used and, the taxonomy is the place where we're kind of collecting them so that everyone knows and we inform everyone across all industries, these are the ones you should probably skew towards, right? And so you, you really don't have to be a programmer. You just have to understand like in the banking industry, for example, like maybe they use certain schemas. We, we don't know, I'm not in the banking industry. So that would be helpful, right? If you're, if you're in any of these verticals, you can hop in as a PM or anyone and be able to Help. I believe we have a uh, Tobias here who, uh, on a last item before time is up, wants to give a little bit of a preview on client bound assertions and what the deal is there because it's an upcoming item now. I'll just give a quick overview. In, in a typical OpenID Connect transaction, um, you've, you've usually got a relying party um, going to some form of authority, often referred to as the OpenID Connect provider that you uh, make a call out to via redirects and requesting uh, the authority to authenticate Alice and then usually requesting some basic set of claims. And, and this usually comes out in what's called the ID token and, and Open ID Connect. Some of the things that it doesn't solve for, which is what we're obviously trying to do in this space in general, is, is when we have uh, Open ID Connect transactions that involve uh, multiple authorities at once for an identity transaction. You know, this is similar to the intent around the presentation exchange format as well. And this is complementary to that. But essentially we're solving for partly in this space, solving for flows where we have information from multiple authorities that we want to pass back into a website in a single identity transaction. And that kind of gives rise to this need for, you know, a wallet to mediate in this flow and, and one of the proposed ways in which this technology I've just shown now with the client bound end user assertions is that flows like SIOP or did authentic SIOP can be extended to uh, pass back claims to a relying party and the issuance can be conducted through uh, this what we've extended OpenID Connect to support. So a typical OpenID Connect transaction kind of looks like this. Usually you have a client which conducts an OpenID Connect request out to an OpenID provider requesting user authentication and some claims. And that um, OpenID provider usually authenticates the end user and then sends back a response either directly via an implicit flow or indirectly via a token exchange and a back channel authentication or authorization code flow. What this flow we have proposed is to extend the request syntax to be not only a request for end user claims, but for what we call client bound end user claims. 
because an open ID connect today, the ID token that is obtained from a traditional open ID connect transaction is not authenticatably bound to the client. The client cannot prove the client being the wallet here cannot reprove to another relying party if it wanted to, such as in this, that it had received the claims from the authority and that it can prove that it has the authority on behalf of Alice to present this information to the website. Mechanically, how this works is we use what's called the signed request object. So essentially all a request is expanded to do is includes a public key and the request and the request is signed by the client and it's requesting some claims in what's called a credential where you specify the assertion format you're after and the resulting response is a verifiable credential in either a JSON LD VC format or a JWT VC format. The way in which we foresee the layering in of DIDs is a DID is essentially an indirection over a set of key material. And so if you want to conduct an open ID connect transaction that involves a binding the credential to a decentralized identifier, then in the original request, you include the decentralized identifier that you that the public key is, is actually mentioned in. And then the resulting response will be, this is the uh, token endpoint response that you get back from an open ID connect transaction, where there is now a new element other than the ID token known as credential that shows the resulting verifiable credential. And this model also solves for authenticating the end user in the process, and it's a, it's a complementary extension of OpenID Connect that, that we think could be quite a powerful flow. Great, thank you so much. That's super important because again, once we can federate into existing infrastructure, that's where you get your billions of users and thousands of companies using this stuff. So, um, and I'll hand it back to Balaj. We're done with the claims credentials part. Thanks for your attention.